Uh, just to clarify, in the press release it says that uh, five of these uh, ten planes were previously uh, ordered. Right. Uh, can you, uh, those, those aircraft were ordered a little bit earlier in the year. We were negotiating and had, had uh, come to an agreement on those airplanes earlier in the year, but had not been announced. So these are additional uh, aircraft in total. Okay, so they are in the Airbus order book? Uh, no, they're not in the Airbus order book. Uh, <laughs> That's why I think we overcomplicated this. This is 10 firm airplanes now going into the Airbus order book. They, they weren't completely finalized, so they had not been announced with no order book. Next question to Michael. Uh, yes, just to clarify, what are the 10 of these aircraft higher grade grades? If not, how many of them are? And how many of them are the 200? And how many of them are the 300? We have the flexibility in terms of whether they're 200 and 300 uh, or 300. We've talked about how important flexibility is to leasing companies. It's not only flexibility in terms of having an aircraft with, range, with a range profile like we've talked about, but also different iterations of that airplane. When we look at the 320 series, we, we, order, we, we may order 320s, but we take 319s, 20, 21. In this case, it's really based on what the airlines um, require. And in many cases, we're seeing a what 10 years ago was a real focus on the 200, perfect airplane. But a number of airlines today, specifically in the Asian region, are driving towards the 300. And from my perspective, the increased range is really what's pushing that. When you, when you think about this next iteration, an additional 400 nautical miles, I what that does is gives those airlines more flexibility. When you started at 212 tons, not that it wasn't a good airplane, but it had limited range, quite frankly. This airplane today is an airplane that can operate both as a shorter range airplane in those 1,800 nautical mile missions, but also can also fly out to the 6,000 nautical mile. So it really, in my view, complements the 350. We, as many of you know, have an order for three, 350s also, and, uh, and from the other manufacturer I won't mention, uh, well, that <laughs> seven thing, that, uh, <laughs> Which one is that, the plastic airplane? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we think this airplane really complements the, the ultra-long uh, range airplane very, very well. Is it? Next question in the room to Patrick Garnier from AFP. What is the value of the deal? Are you selling the, the new uh, version, standard range, standard range version for the same price as the previous one? Uh, no, there's a, a difference in price. Uh, but it's, uh, for those of you here on my presentation on Monday, it's an option. So the 240-ton option is available. You have at 235 tons. And in our normal uh, pricing catalog, we sell increased gross weight. So you would just take base price at 235 tons or even less and just add how many tons of additional gross weight you want on the aircraft. The value of the overall deal is about 2.3 billion. And for a question a little bit earlier, someone asked about how many of these aircraft will be the 240 ton version. That's up to CIT, but we start entry into service in the summer of 2015. So any aircraft by definition, a little bit before then, he started at 14, uh, obviously of the lower gross weight version. Next question to aviation, Jens Kotter. Thanks for your history. For Jen, do you see this aircraft going into the 350 800 niche a bit because it's uh, with all the added capabilities? I, I don't really. I, I think when you look at it from an airline fleet planning perspective, I think it's really a function of where the gravity of your routes are. If you are flying seven, six, seven, eight thousand, even realistically, more than 4,000 nautical miles consistently, you should gravitate towards the longer range airplane because the efficiency comes in the utilization. But as I said earlier, the average range emission profile today for this airplane is 1,800 nautical miles. So if you're an airline that the gravity, that where most of their routes fly, are in the two, three, 4,000 nautical mile range area, but yet need the flexibility to fly a route here or there at 6,000 nautical or up to 6,000 nautical, 
My view is the high growth weight 330 fills that need perfectly. And uh, obviously, Jeff knows what he's talking about because he's bought over 50 A330s. Real expert. Yeah, well, we work hard. It's, our, it's work for us. So. One of our largest customers. Next question. Um, I just wondered um, if you could give us a bit more colour on the negotiations that have taken place at the air show this week. How did the uh, announcement of the longer range affect your, affect your talks over the last few days in terms of whether you were going to increase the order from the five that you already had that were announced up to this ten? Well, John then for breeze pinned me down <laughs> and beat me incessantly. <laughs> but then, <laughs> then they worked on time. <laughs> the fact is, um, these are long-term relationships. Um, we are constantly talking about additional airplanes. Our goal is to have one of the youngest fleets in the leasing industry, and we work very hard to do that. Um, the average age of our fleet is a little less than six years. And if the only way you can keep a large fleet like ours, which you know, is close to 350 airplanes, um, young is to continually buy uh, new airplanes and the latest technology airplanes. So we are constantly talking to Airbus, as an example, about the newest airplanes. So I would say the, and, and John and Fabrice may have a different view of this, but I, I view the air show as a culmination <laughs> of a long process. Next question to Andrea. General question on the show. Um, aside from the excitement of this particular press conference, it seems like things have been slower than in, in previous years. I'm just wondering if you feel that too, and just could comment on why um, we're seeing in general fewer orders than the bond mutual and the Andrea, this is a press conference about this announcement and not the general outlook oh, over the show. But you're going back tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> ah, <laughs> We have our wrap-up uh, yeah, 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 11 o'clock. Uh, David, you have <laughs> another question from Frank Dover. Thank you. Uh, as I said earlier, you're, you've got quite a large A330 commitment and a, a, a bigger one now. Is there room for the A330 freighter, either you build or conversely in your fleet, or you essentially just we, we are um, we are focused on the on the passenger business. We think that the freight business today is an additional area of expertise. It's it's not as as simple as um, putting a freighter door on and then marketing the airplane. These, these gentlemen have a lot of expertise in terms of how the freight market works. I would say. Um, at this point in time, we're going to focus on where we excel, and we believe we excel in the, in the passenger market. Is there another question in the room? 